Barakata Yahawa, Barakata Yahusha, Barakata Yahawa, Barakata Yahusha, Bashem, Rakakwadash, double honor to the apostles, the elders, salutations to you, sincere brothers, teaching and truth and in sincerity. And this lesson will be entitled The Hall of Fame 144. Revelation 7 and 4, and I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed in hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the sons of Israel. Lord will, you are edified. Lord will, we are the hopeful elect. Okay. And Lord will. By default, if we are the hopeful elect, we are not only called, but we are chosen. Okay, there's a difference. Okay, you have to be called and chosen, not only called. All right, now, the focal point of this lesson, all right, the 144,000 is literally the incorruptible crown, the hall of fame. However, the Most High is going to give that individual, that prophet, okay, to perform, to be consistent, okay? Now, just like with football, there is a criteria a player has to meet in order to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, all right? And it's the same way from a spiritual standpoint when we think about being a member of that government body, which is the 144,000. Our first source, syndication.bleacherreport.com, and it states, what are the trademarks of a NFL Hall of Fame player? Okay, now, through the spirit, we can read this, what are the trademarks of a member of the 144,000? And it states, the words Hall of Famer and Hall of Famer caliber are thrown around a lot in the NFL. But just what do they actually mean? What defines a Hall of Famer? Well, as you might expect, a variety of things do. There isn't just one quality that makes a player worthy of the Hall of Fame. In fact, there are four qualities, peak, longevity, impact, by position, and total value. Let's break down each of the four qualifications. Peak. In short, how good was a player during his prime? Was he, Calvin Johnson, hauling in 96 catches for 1,681 yards and 16 touchdowns? Or was he, Anquan Bolden, catching 102 passes for 1,402 yards and seven touchdowns. This goes beyond stats, of course. Someone like Megatron is a focal point of his offense and demands constant attention from the defense. A guy like Wes Welker, on the other hand, is just one of many pieces in New England's offense and benefits from the players and scheme around him. Numbers never show all there is to see. The era the performance comes in is also key. In 2012, 86 receptions for 1,570 yards is a great season. In 1986, when Jerry Rice did it, it was truly incredible. It's nearly impossible to compare stats from different decades. To put it in simple terms, a Hall of Famer must have at one time been an elite player at his position. He had to have been someone teams fear. When you analyze peak, according to the etymon, it means sharpest point. Okay? Sharpest point. So in a nutshell, as prophets, we have to be consistent. Okay? Once we are called into this glorious light, okay, we must continue to build within the spirit to perform at a high level, okay? 
So when we reach our peak through the spirit, we must stay in our peak. Okay? For example, Ecclesiasticus 47 and verse 8. In all his works, he praised the Holy One, Most High, with words of glory. And the he is referring to King David. With his whole heart, he sung songs and loved him that made him. Verse 9, he set singers also before the altar, that by their voices they might make sweet melody and daily sing praises in their songs. Daily. Okay? You see how consistent King David was performing in the spirit. Okay? And this will be classified as his peak. Okay? He was consistent daily. Daily. All right? Another precept. Proverbs 8 and 30. Then I was by him. Now, the I is referring to Yahweh Shai, speaking as King Solomon, which also proves what? Reincarnation. Okay? So, then I was by him. The him is referring to Yahweh, as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, daily, rejoicing always before him. Okay? Daily, daily, do you see how Yahweh Shah was performing? Daily, no days off. And this is classified at his peak, okay? See the difference um, amongst a prophet and a NFL player. That flesh makes them tap out. They can only maintain at their peak for an allotted time. However, however, a prophet, if the Most High is dealing with them, they will continue to flourish within their peak, hence the apostles. Okay? Proverbs 8 and 34. Blessed is the man that hear me watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. So we're supposed to be watching daily, teaching daily, okay? Maximizing our potential within our spiritual peak, okay? Let's continue. Longevity. This one is pretty simple. In order for an NFL player to make a Hall of Fame impact, he has to play for a long time. There are no Hall of Famers who played five seasons in the NFL. To be truly worthy of the Hall, a player has to play for at least a decade through some leeway is given for a position. Otherwise, a player simply wouldn't have contributed enough over the course of his career. Running backs are the most notable exception. If a running back had to play a decade to make the Hall of Fame, almost none would make it. That's an extra, extraordinarily long career for a running back, even by Hall of Fame standards. Longevity. When you go into the term longevity, it means ancient. Age, okay, longevity. Precept. Timothy 5 and 17, let the elders that rule will be counted worthy of double honor. And you base this on what? Their experience, how long they've been putting, putting in the work through the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Shah. Apostle Tar, Apostle Tahar going on 36 years. 
Okay. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. Hence the longevity of Apostle Tahar. Hence the longevity of Apostle Kabar. Hence the longevity of Apostle Rakar. Hence the longevity of Apostle Aramla. Okay? Longevity. And like I stated before, it means old. Ancient. How long you been doing it? How long you been performing at such a great level in this truth? And this is all because of Yahweh Bashem Yahshah placing that spirit on you to do so. And it states, running backs are the most notable exception. If a running back, running back had to play a decade to make the Hall of Fame, almost none would make it. That's an extraordinarily long career for a running back, even by Hall of Fame standards. John 19 and verse 30. When Yahushua therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the spirit. Look at the impact Yahushua had regarding pushing this truth. He is the reason why we're able to have access to the Holy Spirit. Okay? Think about that. Look how he performed. When he was on earth. Let's go back into the article. And it states. Impact by position. If entrance to the Hall of Fame. Was based on a quarterback's impact. Few non-quarterbacks would make it. That simply isn't fair for the other players. A truly great safety like Ed Reed deserves to make the Hall of Fame despite not having an elite quarterback's influence. Reed may not have been as key to the Baltimore Ravens as Tom Brady has been to the Patriots, but that shouldn't bar the safety, safety's entrance. So Hall of Fame standards can be completely independent of position. A player should be recognized for excelling at his job, whether it's rushing the passer or catching the football. Impact by position. Let's go to Isaiah 30 and 20. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and water and the water of affliction, these curses, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore, but thine eyes shall see thy teachers. Okay. And who are the true teachers of Israel? The apostles of Great Millstone. Okay. Now, look at their impact. Regarding their teaching through the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahusha. <clears throat> psalm 19 and 1. A psalm of David. The heavens declare the glory of the Most High, and the firmaments show his handiwork. Verse 2. Day unto day other speech. And night unto night show knowledge. There is no speech nor language which it's like it. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Okay. Hence 2007. Okay. When the spirit hopped on Apostle Tahar to start uploading videos on YouTube. Now look how that impact. Look at the impact this made. 
Okay, so the Most High utilized the internet to push the word throughout the four corners of the world. And he placed the spirit on Apostle Tohar to start publishing videos on YouTube. And therefore, with the assistance of the internet, the truth has became internationally known. <clears throat> Total value. This is to an extent and accumulation of all the prior categories. Without peak and longevity, a player is never all that valuable. And of course, an elite player at a priority position is more, is more valuable than one at an insignificant position. This category is what keeps a punter or long snapper from making the Hall of Fame, even if they should, according to impact by position. A player at those positions will never have enough value to be worthy of the Hall. The two categories must be balanced. The final category is what the Hall of Fame is all about. How much did this player help his team throughout his career? How crucial was he? Get a precept regarding total value. Baruch 5 and 5. Arise, O Jerusalem, and stand on high, and look about toward the east. And behold, thy children gathered from the west unto the east by the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the remembrance of the Most High. All right. So, we are gathered by the word of the Holy One via the internet and via the Most High's prophets by placing his spirit upon Apostle Tohar to upload the work on YouTube and utilizing the internet to do the heavy lifting. Okay? Total value. And this is all based on the spirit of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. So in a nutshell, total value also is going into what? Our worth. Which brings me to Romans 10 and 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to the Most High for Israel is that they might be saved. This is the reason why, through the Spirit, it's important to utilize your talent to flip that money that we might be saved. Okay? Because at the end of the day, we have to have faith and works. Not only faith. Okay? But we have to have faith and works. You have to have both. And the Most High has to give you the faith in order to do the work. Faith and works, okay? Last precept, Luke. Luke 17 and 10. So likewise, ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, meaning what? If you are a prophet, prophesy. Say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. Unprofitable. Okay, in the Greek means what? Hyperbole, which means an exaggerated statement. Okay? And Yahweh Shai utilized this exaggerated statement to keep us balanced. You know, look, if you're a prophet, you're supposed to prophesy. However, go beyond. Okay? Go beyond chasing that incorruptible crown. 
trying to be a member of the 144,000. All right. Now, we understand that everything is predestined. However, the prophets are going to do the work through the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahusha. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> in summary, your performance at your peak and how long you contribute to the truth assists with your impact as a prophet, which increases your value. Lord will, you edify Shalom.